I'm in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, and I was told to make sure to come to this restaurant called the Al Najdi Village. And yeah, that's the name, but it's actually a chain of restaurants that's just super beautiful and they have traditional Saudi food. It's got so much character and exactly the kind of place you want to come to if you can make it here to Saudi Arabia. All right, that's basically the first dish that I was told to get. It's called mutaziz and it's basically a tomato-based stew. It's got chunks of lamb in it and also balls of whole wheat dough. I'm excited about that. I got a pretty large spoon. I want to make sure to get one of those whole wheat doughs. I want a chunk of lamb and also I got a little bit of a potato on there and lots of sauce, which is kind of dripping into my plate right now. So I'll eat this and then tell you guys what it's like. Oh, sorry, it was super hot. It's a tomato-based stew, so it will taste like any tomato-based stew that you have anywhere in the world. It's got the normal spices, turmeric, coriander, pepper, nutmeg. It's also very similar to the stews, the salonas that we have in the UAE. However, what I love about this one is that those whole wheat dough balls, they haven't actually broken apart even though they're sitting within the stew. The matazi actually does remind me of a dish that we have in the UAE, which we call Therid. And I had that with Mark Wien, so you can check it out on that video. And that's my second dish. It's called half chicken salik, and it's basically rice that's cooked in milk and meat broth, and it's got half a chicken on top of it. I am a big fan of the chicken breast. I do love rotisserie chicken, and I do like to keep the skin on top as well, so I'm gonna have all of it. Take a nice large spoon like that. This is the first time that I'm trying this dish. I've actually never had it. This is completely new for me. It's gonna be a new flavor, a new texture, a new experience. I really like that. It still has a very strong rice flavor. And if I were to compare it to anything, risotto, but a little bit more mushy. Really great with chicken. And I understand that you can have this with meat as well. This is a pretty large plate for me, but I understand why you would require a big plate like this. It's really tasty, super simple, super smooth to eat. It's so comforting. I mean, you could sit here for the next couple of hours and just spoon this into your mouth slowly, slowly, and uh, you would not get bored of this. I know I wouldn't get bored of it. This does remind me of an Emirati dish, which is Arsia, and I do cover that in another one of my videos under the playlist, Traditional Emirati Food. Check it out. Very, very similar. All right, but the real reason I got these two dishes is to actually do a fusion between the two. Oh, there we go. Fusion of the Mpaziz and the Salik. Mmm, that is a winner. I saw it here first. Okay, it is January and my resolution to eat healthier still exists, so a little bit of salad. It's a very simple salad, but right after I put that spoon in my mouth, I realized that I have a meeting in an hour and maybe it wasn't a good idea to eat all that raw onion. So you see lots of similarities between our dishes in the UAE and dishes here in Saudi Arabia. Now, don't forget that there are influences from different parts of the world. Now, obviously because of the silk route, a lot of our spices are the same because we also use turmeric, we also use nutmeg, we also use cinnamon and cardamom and pepper and all those things. One of the other similarities, of course, are the pots, pans, plates and things like that that are used because this is very indigenous to this entire area. I remember eating from these when we were young. I want you to quickly take a look at this and the reason why I want you to take a look at it is because there's a difference between UAE coffee and Saudi coffee. First thing you'll notice is the color. This is more greenish, yellowish, so it's a lot lighter in color while ours in the UAE is 
a lighter brown to almost a dark, dark brown slash pitch black. A lot of that has to do with the roasting process. And in the UAE, people like to roast it a lot more than over here. Now in terms of flavor, cardamom all the way. All right, and with that, I prepared my palate for the dessert. And it's basically Nejdi brown bread. It looks like pancake bread that is sauteed with seedless dates and butter. I mean, what's not to like? Bread, butter, and dates. The bread is definitely pancake-like, and it obviously has been sauteed with butter. I get that French toast kind of flavor as well. And of course, the sweetness, the date. I mean, that just overpowers everything, which is just fine by me. Oh my god, I wish they didn't bring me this big pot because I have a feeling I might finish it. That's not a good thing. I was talking about resolutions earlier and eating more healthy, but I think I'm pretty much gonna destroy that right now. Oh, and if you have a super large family, have no worries because there is an entire floor for you guys. This fits about 40. 